Hello, good people, and welcome to Data Independent, a learning platform for data analysts and data scientists all over the world. My name is Greg, and I run this uh, lovely channel. And today we're going to be going over one of my favorite topics, which is manually calculating user retention. And if that sounds boring, well, that's what we're going over today. So hit next and skip this video because you probably won't find it very interesting. Anyway, if you nerd out on data and analyzing your users and analyzing their behavior to see what's going on with your product or app, then stick around because this is the one you want to do. So today we're going to be talking about retention curves and how to manually calculate them. First of all, what is a retention curve? Well, it's those curves that you see where you start with a group of users and then you look at the x-axis, which is usually a relative uh, time away from when somebody first started on your app. And you basically see, well, how many people are left with my app? And this is really important because what you want is you want to see that the drop off is really, really small, meaning that there's a lot of users who continue to stick around with your app. People use this all the time within, uh, you know, product analytics, behavior analytics, and usually B to C, but also we use it in B to B all the time. And most of the time, your BI tool is going to tell you your user retention. So you're going to work with an amplitude or a mix panel or whatever it may be and it will manually calculate retention for you. However, very much like the wax on wax off within the Karate Kid, it's really, really important to see this work at the foundational level so you don't take it for granted and so you can fully understand what's going on for, with it when you uh, end up implementing it yourself. So there's the intro. I'm gonna put all this on our website and gonna do a pretty good blog post for it. And so that's where the uh, nitty gritty details will be. This code will be on GitHub and uh, Let's just jump right into it. I won't read everything on here. You can do that on your own, but I will do the code alongside of you. So what we're gonna do is, well, let's calculate it and let's graph, graph retention off of a data set. As always, I'm gonna import my packages. Today we're doing pandas, numpy, and then matplotlib. Pandas to do our data wrangling, numpy to do some special data wrangling, and then uh, matplotlib, pyplot to do some charting for us. Uh, this one, it's good and it's easy, it's not very pretty. So if you want a pretty one, go look at another, uh, go get Seaborn or go do something wild and go there. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna read in a retention data set, and this is retention data set.csv, and I'm doing some parsing of the dates so that it knows that this column that's called day is an actual date time. I'm gonna print out how many rows we have, and we're gonna take a look at the data frame. So we have 300,000 rows, that's a fair amount of rows, and we have uh, three columns, user ID, day and then active. Now I made this data set, which I'm actually gonna, might even do another video for how I created this data set. Let me know if you want to in the description or in the comments and I'll do it. It's a little harder than I thought it was gonna be, whatever. So we have three columns, user ID, day and active. This is very, very common to what you'll see a you know user analytics or behavioral analytics data set looks like. Now we know who did an action and we know what day they did their action on. And this is great. And so, and well, I should say this last column active doesn't really tell us much because before I had uh, ones and zeros on here for inactivity, days of inactivity, but made the data set too big. So we're only looking at active dates here, which is the important part anyway. Anyway, so we have users and we have day. And so let's see, actually see really quickly how many uh, users we have just to get some um, user ID, just to get a good feel for what we have. And I'm going to say user ID, then I'm going to say dot and unique, which stands for dot number of unique, which will just tell you how many unique values you have. And it looks like I have about 15,000 users. Okay, cool. So we have a lot of different dates here. Let me get that back in there. Um, cool. So what we're ultimately going to do is, is that we're going to find out when each user started, we're going to, uh, and then just calculate the relative day of this day of activity since they first started. Don't worry, we'll go over that in a second. And then we're gonna plot that out and see how many users are still active after X number of days. Um, the steps are up here if you wanna take a look. I recommend going to the blog post uh, without seeing it here. Uh, cool. So first thing we're gonna do is I wanna um, figure out when each one of these users first started. So for example, this user, CC81, whoever this is, when was the very first day that they were active on our platform? The way you're gonna do that is you're just gonna group by user ID and then you're gonna take the minimum date. Your aggregate function on your day column will be min, and so you'll find out, well, when was the first date that this user ID showed up for us, which makes sense. So let me do this. I'm gonna do that in pandas. Here's my group by. I'm taking the min, and then I'm just renaming it so I get a start day. 
uh, which makes it easier. And all of a sudden, now you have a series with user ID, and then you have the minimum date in which this user started. So for example, 0090, this person started on April 17th, 2020, because that was their minimum day that we saw them for activity. Cool, makes sense. And then we'll go ahead and merge this back onto our main data frame. And then now all of a sudden what we have is we have our user, we have a day that they were active, and then we have their first start date. So it looks like this January 20th, that was their first start date, makes sense. But they were also active on January 21st. And we still have their uh, start date on here as well. You'll see why this is important in a second because we're going to cohort our users. Um, cool. So now let's calculate the days since uh, this person first started. So what I want to do here is I want to get a relative activity date for each user day that they were active. What does that mean? Well, because I know that this user started on January 20th, I want to know this date, but I don't want to know the date. I want to know how many days is it ahead of when they first started. So for example, this 21st, well, that's one day after the 20th. And so I want to know that this is one. January 22nd would be two. You see here that we skip the 23rd and we go straight to the 24th, which is four days after. Here we have the 29th, which is nine days after. And so I want to get the relative number of dates for that user. And the reason why we do that is because when you do retention analytics, the X axis, you'll notice if we go back to that curve over here, the X axis isn't an actual date. It's in this example, it's one week later, two weeks later, three weeks later. And that is a relative date relative to when they started to. So in order to remove the specific date of it and put all these users on the same X axis, I want to find out this day of activity relative to when they first started. And in order to do that, I'm basically just going to subtract. I'm going to subtract this day, or I should say, I'm going to subtract their start day from this day and then get the number of days uh, from it. Go ahead and do that. And then all of a sudden here, I, I created a new column called days since start. And now I have this days since start. So now what I can do is I can actually compare two users. Even though they didn't actually start on the same day, I can compare their um, the number of days since they started together, which is really awesome. So I can look at how many users were active on their fourth day since they started. I spend so much time on that because it's really important for retention curves and when you make everybody on the same playing field. Okay. So now that we have that, okay, greet. What I also want to do is I want to extract their start week and then do the weeks since they started and then extract their start month and do the months since they started as well. This week one, it takes a little second, so I'll let that run while I'm talking here. Now, I'm not going to go into the specifics about that because the what we're, I'm trying to teach you the idea of what's going on here rather than the specific code. If you want the specific code, head over to the GitHub and check it out. I'll do their start month as well. And let's see what we actually have uh, here as well. So this is the same data frame that we had. We had the day that they were active. We had that they were active here. Then their start day. Now, but the important part that we're going to use a whole lot later is this days since start. And we're going to also use this month start right here so we know when they started. For example, this person, they started in January. So we have their January date right there. We're going to take, we're going to use that later in just a second here. Cool. So because I'm, I want to look at 40 day retention here. And so what I want to do is, is I want to make sure that everybody who I look at um, has at least 40 days worth of data. I'm just doing some quick filtering right here. And it turns out that actually this, oh, there we go. Oh yeah, so it's the same either way. Um, it turns out when I built this data set, I made sure that everybody had enough data. So this is just a precautionary step. I can almost skip over that part. So let's take a look at what we actually have in the end. We have our user ID and we have the days since they started. And remember, each row here represents a day of activity. And so what I want to know is, okay, so there's 100% of users that started on day zero because by definition, that's we looked at the minimum date, which that's what it tells us. And then two, how many users were active one day after they first started? This user was. Well, how many others? How many other users were too? It's really interesting. So. This user, for example, this CC81, they were not active on their third day. So if we grouped by day, they would not show up for entry number three, which is interesting because now we start to ask ourselves the question, how many users were active on day three? Well, how many users were active on day four and day five and day six and day seven? And so to answer this question, what we're going to do here is we're actually going to group by days since they started 
and we're gonna count unique on the number on the user ID. So 100% of people will have a zero entry because that's the way that we define this data set. I wonder how many people are gonna show up on day one. So they were active the day after they first started. Go ahead and run this. And what we see here is we had that 15,000 users, which is, the, which is the same number that we had up above, but there was only 10,000 people active on the next day, which is really interesting. It's like, oh, sweet, okay. So now that's 10,000 people. Well, let's do some quick, uh, let's do some quick mental math here. And by mental, I mean on the computer. And we'll do uh, basically 10,000 divided by 15,000. And so only 70% of people were active the next day. Interesting. Okay. Um, yeah. So that, and that's interesting. So it means that 29% of people dropped off. Okay, cool. So now we have our next day retention already, just like that. Simple, which is really sweet. Um, however, the one thing I am going to do is these are absolute numbers right now. And so instead of 15,000, I want to normalize this and I want to see 100% there. So I'm just going to divide this by uh, n unique and then we'll get 100% here of our total users, which is sweet. Okay, cool. So there's that 70 number. How many people were active the next day? 56% were active on day two, 49 on day three, 44 on day four. Nice. We're starting to see some interesting data here. Um, and so let's plot this on a chart right here. And so if we have 100% and then 70% and then 56%, what does this look like on a chart? Well, I'll tell you what, I just ran that right there. Here's this blue line and that shows you the retention rate across the entire cohort of 15,000 users. Now, what I called out here is one specific example. So at this point right here, I drew a line at 20 days. And so it says that there's 23 users retained on day 20. So of everybody who started at 100%, only 23 were active on day 20. Interesting. So all of a sudden we just calculated how many users were active on each one of these days. And it's like, okay, cool. So we could stop right there and um, be happy with our results. However, is this getting better over time? And what I mean by that is if you're talking to your product manager, you're pr talking to your execs, they're like, okay, cool, retention's great, but is it going the right direction? And are things getting better? That's a key question that you wanna know and that you should be able to answer as a data analyst. So in order to answer that, what I wanna do is I wanna plot the retention for everybody who started in January. And then I want to plot the retention for everybody who started in February and then March and then April and then May and then see if these different cohorts are having better retention or worse retention. Okay, so let's go back down here. We have our plot. And so that's exactly what we're going to do, basically. And the part I want to call your attention to is, is don't mind this as kind of just boilerplate right now for our chart in a second. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create a for loop. And with this for loop, I'm gonna iterate through each one of the unique months that we have started here. So let's actually see what this looks like, just for a bit more clarity. And you can see here that we have January all the way through August. And so we're gonna look at eight different cohorts, make sure this is a, yeah, eight different cohorts of users and see how these um, different users who started in different months, how their retention matches up with each other, okay? And so with that, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna do a filter and I'm basically gonna filter my big data frame for people who just started in January. And remember, I'm gonna loop through this, but so it's dynamic on which date I'm looking for. I'm gonna calculate the retention cohort, which is that same simple group by that I was doing, doing before. I'm going to plot the retention cohort. And then what I'm gonna do here is this is a little hacky way that I'm gonna do a legend and I'm just gonna put some text on there. So let's do drum roll. Let's see what this looks like and plot and iterate through go all the way down and sweet. So what this looks like is actually what I've done is I've split these cohorts apart. And what you can see here is that this top group has higher retention than these bottom two groups. And this top group is actually August 2020. And the bottom group is January 2020. So you can go and tell your execs, hey, retention's getting a whole lot better. This is sweet. You're doing something well. And the way you can tell that is you can see these lines rising. So let's explain two of these and see what it means in English and so you can explain it a little bit better. This January 2020 cohort, that's this blue line down at the bottom right here. Let's see if I should zoom in just a little bit more. That's the blue line down at the bottom right here. Yeah, there we go. And what this says is that, let's look at day 40 for example. So at day 40, there was only something like, I don't know what you wanna call it, it's like 4% or 3% active on day 40 at that blue line. But now for all the people who started in August, 
on day 40, they're like 37% active, which is crazy. That's huge. So now all of a sudden you have way more users that are sticking around with your app and they're likely paying you more money. And so things are going the right direction. All right. Which is, <coughs> which is good. Good for you. Good for the business. And uh, this looks great. So congratulations. Good job. And what I want to say is, is Matt, awesome. You just manually calculated retention, which is a fundamental skill for any product analyst. Um, now you may be able to drag and drop this on the tool elsewhere, but here you'll be able to impress and show your friends and, uh, go download the code, go have some fun and show me your retention curves as well. Put them in the comments, put them on Twitter, wherever the heck you want. I'd love to see them. We'll see you guys later.